Part four, we're talking about force curves. Uh, what's a force curve? The force we're going to be looking at is muscular force or tension during an isometric contraction with the limb locked into a machine. Now if you look at tension during a dynamic movement, it's just too complicated. You have changing length of the muscle, you have changing speed of the contraction, and you have the switch from eccentric to isometric to concentric. All right, when you lock the limb into a machine, you get rid of all those dynamic muscular factors and you get a nice easy curve that's easy to interpret. So here's what we're looking at. Muscular force versus time. The height of the curve on the right shows maximum tension. The path leading up to that shows how fast the tension is generated. A steeper slope on the left indicates a higher rate of force development, aka explosiveness. Now for most sports movements, all that matters is the first quarter second of the curve. The goal of strength training and explosive training is to raise that small section. So over time, your force curve is molded by your activity. Moving lighter loads at a higher velocity produces a higher rate of force development, but less strength. Moving heavier loads produces more strength, but a lower rate of force development. So if this is a sprinter, this is a power lifter. The power lifter has higher maximum tension and higher maximum strength, but the sprinter produces more force in the first part of the curve. Now, I didn't come up with this. This is not my opinion. Research led by P.V. Kami in 1982, effects of heavy resistance and explosive type strength training methods on mechanical, functional, and metabolic aspects of performance. They measured isometric force curves after explosive training and after heavy resistance training. Here's the graph. Look familiar? Now how does this happen? Think back to part one. We talked about increasing neuromuscular strength. That adaptation by itself raises the whole curve. But think back to parts two and three. We talked about strength training, slowing down the nervous system and lowering rate of force development. That slows the ascent of the curve. So the combination of those two effects produces this difference in the force curves. Okay, so in order to use strength training effectively for athleticism, we have to get that increased neuromuscular strength that raises the curve, but minimize the slowing down effect. So we need some strategies to achieve that. First, I talked about this in the last video, if you're going to be doing heavy lifting, you got to do your high speed training too. If you just lift, it will slow down your force curve. Here's an example. Got this post on Facebook. Guy hurt his ankle, couldn't jump. He lifted, got significantly stronger, lost five inches on his vert. You gotta do high speed activity. You cannot turn yourself into a lifter. Second, even in your strength training, focus on speed more than weight. Do a lot of lighter lifting, moving the weight fast. Build strength more with volume than with intensity. Example. Squats, six sets of five, start at 50%, work up to 75%. Now that set of five at 50% is not a warm up. You gotta attack that with full intensity. Move that weight. Okay, so we have these strategies, but truth is, once you get some lifting experience, getting stronger is not easy. At least not for most of us. We have to lift hard and we have to lift frequently. Now there's no way to do that without some slowing down your force curve. That's just the way it is. Now that's why my third guideline for the effective use of strength training is only use it temporarily. You use it to build strength, but once that strength stops producing athletic gains, you gotta stop lifting in order to let your force curve get fast again. Consider the scenario. Beginner athlete, untrained, low curve. Introduce strength training. There's a fast increase in strength. The whole curve goes up. This athlete gets better at everything. However, pretty soon the strength gains are hard to come by and those slowing down factors start kicking in. So maybe the curve goes up a little bit on the right, but there's no improvement in force production in that first quarter second. The athlete gets stronger, but doesn't get more athletic. At this point, continuing to build strength is not going to help. Slow training needs to be done away with so rate of force development can go back up 
and the curve will hopefully end up somewhere around here. Now, the more advanced of an athlete you are, the higher and faster your force curve is, the sooner you will run into this scenario. Now, I don't want to downplay the importance of strength. Once you have a fast force curve, getting stronger is the primary means by which you can get more athletic. Okay, so it's extremely important, but at higher levels of athleticism, increasing strength tends to lower rate of force development. So it really only builds athletic potential. In order to realize that potential, you have to stop lifting. Think of it this way. Uh, you're a sprinter. You have sprinting and you have lifting. Now they're very different activities and they have different adaptations. Now the body adapts to what you do. So if you're doing both, you're going to be adapted somewhere in the middle. Okay, the only way to be completely adapted to sprinting is to stop lifting. That's just the way it is. That's how the body works. Now I know there's going to be a lot of questions and skepticism. Let me tell you, this works. It really, really works. Go to jumpscience.com and read the article titled Long-Term Athletic Development. Also, for more on force curves, read the Strength Speed Spectrum article. Alright, sorry for rambling.